Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Berniston's online service this week. And after a week where it seems that circumstances are all up in the air again, it's good to look forward to John's talk to us later on in the service that's um, based around David's prayer in 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 29, which Georgette will be reading to us a bit later on in the service. But the first part of that prayer um, goes like this. It's giving the Lord God praise. And it says, you, God, are the greatness, the power, the victory, the glory and majesty. And um, certainly at times I need reminding about the fact that uh, that is the truth. And we can trust in a God who is the greatness, who is the power, the victory and the majesty and has all glory. And how thankful we can be that he is the one that in all our individual circumstances is there waiting uh, and working alongside each one of us in our individual circumstances, whatever they may be. And as a result of that, I was also really um, thrilled when uh, Claire and Andrea changed the beginning prayer uh, on the outside of the church this week and how wonderful it is to go past the church and see um, a prayer of blessing from this God who is almighty and who is all powerful. It's actually a prayer that St Paul, very fond of saying either at the beginning or the end of many of his letters to communities and to individuals, where he says, may the Lord bless you with love, with peace, with joy and hope. And so I thought as we start our service this morning, I would use those wonderful treasures that the Lord wants to share with us as we pray. So shall we pray at the start of the service? So Lord God, we do indeed thank you. Thank you that you long to bless us with your love. It's a love that in these unpredictable days is a love that's always present, a love that searches us out and a love that provides for our needs and directs our hearts towards you. So we thank you, Lord, for blessing us with that love. And we also thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your hope. A hope that is based on firm foundations in each of our hearts through your Holy Spirit, your precious Holy Spirit. And often providing us with just enough light um, to manage the often complicated spaces in our minds and our hearts. So thank you for blessing us with your hope, Lord. And also, Lord, thank you for blessing us with your joy. The joy of knowing that uh, even though we frequently have so many questions and wonderings, we are secure that we are being held in the words of um, one of the songs that we used to sing. We are being held in the answer's hands, held in the answer's hands of all our wanderings and what joy and security that can give us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that you bless us with your peace. You bless us with a peace that does indeed pass all understanding and yet 
is so good at dispelling fear and anxiety as we lean into you and allow you through your spirit to calm um, often racing thoughts that we find difficult to control and racing emotions that we find difficult to control. So help us through your Holy Spirit, Lord, to accept the blessing of your peace. So may, as we continue in this act of worship, may the Lord bless us with his hope, his love, his joy, his peace, as we also pray that same blessing over our communities. We ask this in and through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is indeed the victor, the power and the majesty. Amen. God bless. Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. Today's reading is taken from 1 Chronicles 29 verses 10 to 20. David praises the Lord. Then in front of everyone, David sang praises to the Lord. I praise you forever, Lord. You are the God our ancestor Jacob worshipped. Your power is great and your glory is seen everywhere in heaven and on earth. You are king of the entire world and you rule with strength and power. You make people rich and powerful and famous. We thank you, our God, and praise you. But why should we be happy that we have given you these gifts? They belong to you and we have only given back what is already yours. We are only foreigners living here on earth for a while, just as our ancestors were. And we will soon be gone like a shadow that suddenly disappears. Our Lord God, we have brought all these things for building a temple to honour you. They belong to you and you gave them to us. We are happy because everyone has voluntarily given you these things. You know what is in our everyone's heart and you are pleased when people are honest. Always make us eager to give and help us be faithful to you. Just as our ancestors Abraham, Ace, Isaac and Jacob faithfully worshipped you and give Solomon the desire to completely obey your laws and teachings and the desire to build the temple for which I have provided these gifts. David then said to the people, now it's your turn to praise the Lord, the God your ancestors worshipped. So everyone praised the Lord and they bowed down to honour him and David, their king. God blesses the public reading of his word. Amen. This week's reading is all about King David. Um, we've decided to look at some stories about King David in this Bible that I'm holding. God looked at to King David's heart instead of his outside. Today we're going to make some heart-shaped biscuits because your God looks at the inside, not the outside. The first thing we're going to do is put the butter in the bowl. The next thing to do is put sugar in the bowl. Let's mix the mixture up now. Now we need to add a 
little bit flour. Pour the flour carefully into the sieve, Georgina. Now we need to shake the sieve carefully, very carefully. Now we need to mix it, then add a little bit of vanilla, please. Everybody's doing a great job, especially Georgina. Squidge it up into a big bowl. Use your hands. Remember to wash your hands first. It's very important for your children to lick the mixture. As Georgina's licking the mixture, if you see. Remember to roll it out, the mixture out. If you have a grown up next to you, that's okay because they can flatten it down. If a little one's too bad for you, then use a, um, use a bigger one. Uh, now you have to cut it out. We're using heart shaped uh, cookie cutters because um, God looks at your heart, not your outside. Georgina's doing really good. Now, do as many as you can from the mixture. Remember to put them in the oven with for with a grown up. If you're a child, you need the grown up to put it in the oven. So if you're a child, don't put it in the oven. That's what I'm trying to say. We're gonna be decorating our cupcakes with icing and sprinkles. And if you're a kid, you can make the box. Mummy. Uh, lastly, we need to eat them and check how they taste. I know how they taste because they taste yummy. Mm. So, can you put your hands together to pray? Dear God. Dear God. Dear God. You chose David to be king because he had a good heart. Please give us a good heart so that we can love and obey you. God. Amen. 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 It's good to be able to gather around God's word again. And again, we're looking at uh, prayer. And there are some crossovers and similarities between what we looked at last week with Hannah's prayer and this great prayer that David prayed in 1 Chronicles. And so before we open God's word, let's pray together. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, as we come before you to study your word, we pray that through the written word and through the spoken word, we may by your spirit be led ever closer to the one who is the living word, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so this prayer that we've looked at this morning is a prayer of David. 
And David is responsible for many, many prayers in the Old Testament, especially through the book of Psalms, where there are so many prayers and petitions. But this prayer that's offered in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 10 through to 20, is offered in a specific context. And yet it has a truth for all times and all circumstances. This prayer is offered to the, towards the end of David's life. And if you read the opening of 1 Kings, you realise that David, as he grew older, uh, became very weak and, and needed to be nurtured and looked after and suffered from some rebellions. Uh, but actually in this prayer, we see something of the vigour of this old man when it comes to his spirituality the very heart of his being, but we'll come to that in a moment. The specific context of this prayer is as yet there is no temple. God has told David that his son Solomon is the one who's going to build the temple. Although in verse chapter 28, uh, 28 uh, David gives Solomon some very detailed plans of what the temple should be like down to how much some of the vessels in the temple should weigh, etc. And in chapter 29, in the verses prior to this, David donates much of his personal fortune, huge quantities of gold and silver and precious stones towards the building of the temple. Uh, and the leaders of the people of Israel follow suit and soon vast resources are at hand to allow this great building uh, to come into being. And in verse 9 it says the people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders. They are given so freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. So that's the background of the prayer itself. The prayer. And so now we turn to the prayer itself. And the first thing to say about this prayer is that it is a prayer that really, as I said earlier, shows the full vigour of David, despite the fact that he is by now a very old man and in many ways quite in infirm. And yet the, the words that are used in this prayer don't show any of that. They just show his rich heritage, his rich spiritual resources that he has about him. And so the first thing to say about this prayer is that it is a prayer of praise from beginning to the end. It praises the God of Israel. It's a prayer that's offered with great joy and with immense gratitude. It's a prayer that honours and glorifies the God of Israel. It acknowledges his greatness, his splendour and his majesty. And as such, many of the things that David prays here find their way into our prayers. We may not have read, some probably have never read uh, all of 1 Chronicles, but the words that David prays here have a resonance, they've got a familiarity, because some of the, the words and the phrases that they use find their way into many of the liturgies and our personal prayers that make up our own devotional life now. So this prayer is not just a template for a prayer of praise, actually some of the words and the phrases find their way. We borrow them in some of the prayers that we pray right now in the 21st century. And so David lifts a prayer of praise and it's done in the presence of the whole assembly. And he begins, praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father, Israel. It's not a bad introduction, is it? And in this, David acclaims and affirms that the God of Israel is a personal God. Yes, he's the God of Israel, the nation, but it's not just the nation. He, he attributes it to the faith of the father of the nation, of Israel himself. God could have said the God of Abraham, of Moses, of Isaac. But what this phrase points to is an essential truth about God, and that is that he is relational, that he is our God, that he's remote, not just a remote, he isn't rather, a remote, distant deity. He is a loving God who David knows, who David has experienced. 
David has known him as a shepherd, as a protector, as a guide. And so David lifts a prayer of praise to one with whom he has a relationship with and whom we can have a relationship with. And if that's true for David, it's even more true for us. Jesus says, when you pray, pray, our Father. And actually what he says is, Abba Father, it's Daddy. Now, now my own father was a typical bluff Yorkshireman, a man of few words and of even fewer displays of emotion. He wasn't exactly a Victorian aloof father, but he, he wasn't far off. But Jesus tells his followers that they should pray to a tender, loving father, to a daddy. And in the first letter of John, in chapter 3, verses which I love, it says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Love lavished on us. We are adopted as God's children. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to praise and give thanks and pray to that God, a Father who is like that. But then David magnifies this praise when we when we think about his his qualities, his essential nature. David in his prayer addresses God, his God and our God, as one who is from everlasting to everlasting. Our God is not finite and limited. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And everything else will pass away. Every kingdom, every political system will eventually fade and perish. Every empire waxes and wanes and even the earth itself will not last forever. But our God is from everlasting to everlasting. And in a very familiar phrase to us, David prays, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the majesty and the splendour. For everything in heaven and on earth are yours. Now, David knows a thing or two about greatness and power, about glory and majesty, about kingship. David was Israel's great king, the one that they look back to throughout their history as being the pinnacle of kingship. He was a mighty king and a noble warrior. So he knew about kingship. And some rulers, especially the Roman Empire, uh, they got big-headed about their kingship. They claimed divine status. But David knew that his power was limited. His strength and the strength of Israel was puny compared to the strength of the God of Israel, of his mighty strength and power. As you get to know me, you'll understand that I'm a bit of a sci-fi buff. And I like Star Wars. And in the original film, uh, on the completion of the Death Star, one of the characters says, this star is now the ultimate power within the universe. I suggest we use it. To which Darth Vader replies, don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to destroy a planet is nothing compared with the power of the Force. Now that's a work of fiction. But the God that we serve is more powerful than anything, any system, any government, any person. More powerful than nations or individuals. God is supreme. The whole earth is his. The whole universe belongs to him. And David knows he only reigns in Israel because God permits it. And in his case, God has ordained it. Jesus, in his interview with Pontius Pilate in John's Gospel, responds to Pilate's statement, don't you realise I have the power to crucify you or free you? 
And Jesus responds to that by saying, you would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. The God to whom David prayed, the God whom we serve, is the God who is sovereign and all-powerful. And so David prays a prayer, a blessing and a thankfulness to the God who is loving, a God who is relational, a God who is faithful and steadfast, a God who is everlasting to everlasting, is the Alpha and the Omega, and to a God who is worthy to receive all praise and all honour and all glory and all splendour and all majesty, because he is sovereign. And David also praises a God who is generous. David knows and acknowledges that everything that he has has come from God. All wealth and honour came from him. Now last week in the, uh, what we looked at with Hannah's prayer in chapter 2, the same is true. Because in verse 6, she acknowledges that it's the Lord who brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and he raises up. He sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. Everything comes from the hands of this great and glorious God. Now we all know the story of when David as a young man went up against the mighty warrior Goliath. And he went up against him not with, with a shield and a sword, not with the, the armour that the king had wanted to give him to go against this, uh, this mighty warrior. He went against him with, with a few stones from a stream, a slingshot, but most importantly in the strength of the God of Israel. He'd gone against him with God on his side and he was vindicated and he was victorious. And the fact is that Israel under David, but more importantly, under the blessings of God, had enjoyed a time of peace and prosperity. And God had provided for them. And David had enormous wealth. And out of that wealth, he'd made an enormous contribution towards the cost of the temple. And the people followed suit. They got enormous wealth. And their leaders had enormous wealth. And so they gave, and they gave, and they gave. And they gave joyfully. <coughs> knowing that God had given them. And knowing that God would continue to give them. They were enjoying a time and a season of great blessing. And so in this, in this prayer, David gives thanks and praises to God for all the good gifts, for all his wealth, all his honour, his skill, his strength, his throne, the mighty men that had come his way. David knew that all these had come from the hands of the God that he served and he needed to bring his praises to God for the many, many, many blessings that came to him. And the same is true for us. We receive blessing upon blessing upon blessing, materially and spiritually. I know in my own life, the great gift of having God in my life and the way that God has used me in all sorts of different situations and circumstances. And we love and serve a great God. We love and serve a great God. He is from everlasting to everlasting. A God to whom all greatness and power and majesty and splendor belong. A God who gives generously and graciously. And for us, a God who in Jesus Christ has saved us, has redeemed us, has given us the promise of eternal life. A God who calls us to be his children, who has given us an inheritance that can never spoil or fade. The promise of being with Jesus Christ in heaven for all eternity. We serve a God who lavishes his love upon us. 
And that is worthy of a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. A prayer that acknowledges how wonderful our God is. A prayer that echoes this prayer of David. And so let's, with David, with the great heroes of the faith down through the age, praise and thank our God and ascribe to him all the glory, the honour, the majesty that he deserves. And so let's pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we know that you are a wonderful, wonderful, true and loving God. We acknowledge that we've experienced from you blessing upon blessing and we want to praise your name. We want to give you thanks and blessing and honour and glory. We want to, in the presence of the people of this world, to say that you are our God and we are pleased to be counted as your people. And so, Heavenly Father, we do want to give you thanks and praise for everything you've done for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Help us to be thankful, help us to praise you, help us to worship you as you deserve, as the one who brings us and is the author and perfecter of our faith. And so, Heavenly Father, we bless you we thank you and we worship you now and always. Amen. Good morning and uh, now we come to our time of prayer and um, I just want to thank you John for your uh, sermon to us today and I just pray uh, that we would learn from all the points that you have made and I thought perhaps we could um, start this time of prayer just by repeating the first couple of verses of the passage that was used today from 1 Chronicles 29 and so I'm going to read um, the first couple of verses as, um, as, as, um, as praise at the start of this time together. O Lord the God of our ancestor Israel May you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory and the majesty. Everything in the heaven and on earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honour come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people were made great and given strength. I could carry on, uh, but um, I think I'll we'll leave it there. And now we come to our prayers. We start, Lord, thinking of the world. And we think about the situation on some of the Greek islands, and in particular on the island of Lesbos, and the thousands of refugees that are sheltering there without proper shelter, or sanitation, or food, or the basic requirements of life. And Lord, these are refugees safe, seeking safe haven away from times and places of trouble where they're under threat. And Lord, we just pray that these people, these who are just seeking safe havens, a life, all the things that we take for granted, Lord, we pray that... Um, they would encounter countries and governments that are willing to open their borders and their hearts, including our own country. Lord, we think of the USA and the forthcoming election, and we pray that tensions would be eased between the far-right militia groups that seem to be appearing and supporters of the Black Lives Matter movement in particular. We pray, Lord, that in particular black people would feel that their um, concerns and their grievances are being listened to and that concerns are being taken forward. Lord, we pray for justice for all. We pray, Lord, that the elections would be completed peacefully and that the results would be beyond doubt 
and would be honoured by all sides. And Lord, we pray that the spread of coronavirus throughout the world would be halted. That the numbers affected worldwide would fall. And that all of those people who live in conditions which prevent social um, distancing and, and the ability to isolate, that they would be protected. We pray for an effective vaccine that would rid the world of this miserable disease. And Lord, in the meantime, we pray that the actual effects of the disease would lessen, that it would become weaker, if not disappear altogether. Lord, we now can think of our own uh, country, the UK. And we prayed for all those needing coronavirus tests to be able to obtain them quickly and locally. Again we pray for all efforts to find a vaccine and we pray for protection for all frontline workers including and importantly those in the NHS and care homes who are working with the patients affected by this disease. We pray Lord that you would protect them and guard them. Lord we pray for all those at risk of unemployment or redundancy as a result of this situation. We pray, Lord, that their jobs would be protected, or if they do become unemployed, that they would find new fulfilling work quickly. Holy Spirit, please work to prevent people becoming despairing and depressed. We pray for all young people who are being asked yet again to make more sacrifices to protect the older people from COVID. We pray that they would not grow resentful, as it is their jobs and their lifestyle that's most often a threat. We pray for our government to make the correct decisions for the good of all and for the UK healthily, socially and economically. We pray for Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, who is making decisions about furloughing. And for the Brexit talks, that a deal would be sought and would be struck that would help and not harm both the UK and the EU. We pray for all those suffering mental health problems. We pray that they would feel the comforting, healing touch of your Holy Spirit and that they would be able to get help whenever it's needed most. Lord, hear our prayers. We think now of our situation locally and in our church locally, Lord, we pray that we would be that light on the hill, reflecting Jesus' grace, mercy and love to all. We pray for all those making decisions about reopening church, that we would come to the right decisions at the right time, that would honour you and would protect all those coming back to church and re-entering the doors. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us our new minister, John Hartley, and we pray that you would bless him, his wife Miranda, and his family during his time with us. We pray that you would use him to lead us forward together to spread your glorious gospel to all. We pray, Lord, that we would, would be able to work together with all churches, that all churches would be brought together in Scarborough to work to meet the needs of all in their localities. And we pray, Lord, that as individual churches, we would use this time to seek your face as to how best to spread your glorious gospel. In short, Lord, 
show us where we need to change, to change our collective and individual attitudes and behaviours to meet new needs in these unfamiliar times. Now we come to our own individual situations and Lord we pray for all those that need a special touch from you that we know of. Our friends, our family, our people from church, those that we know need to hear from you, that need your healing touch, your loving touch of comfort, healing and hope. I'll leave a few seconds for you to name those people silently. And now, Father, for us all, we ask that your Holy Spirit would inspire us, that it would comfort us, protect us, invigorate us and motivate us to help spread news of our glorious gospel, your gospel of hope, reconciliation, resurrection and new beginnings in Christ that really is available to all of us regardless of our age, our gender, our race, our ability, our sexuality or our background. Lord, send us out to help spread your gospel that is so essentially needed in these times. In your name, Lord, we pray these things. Amen.